ان الحمد لله نحمده واستعينه واستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا من سيئات اعمالنا ما يهدي الله فلا مضل الله وما يضلل فلا هادي الله اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون واتسموا بحب الله جميعا ولا تفرقوا يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبثها رجالا كثيرا والنساء اتقوا الله تسالون به وارحم ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وكونوا كولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم وما يدري الله ورسول الله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما الحمد لله رب العالمين والذي جعلنا مسلمين قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في القران الكريم نعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ان الدين عند الله الاسلام وقال الله سبحانه وتعالى اليوم اكملت لكم دينكم واتممت عليكم نعمتي وردت لكم اسلام الدين وقال لكم دين اكم ولي الدين الحمد لله رب العالمين the focus in today's khutbah is on the word deen في لغة العربية in the Arabic language deen is translated to the English language almost always as the word religion I will tell you it's not wrong but it's not complete is that a good way to say it it's not wrong but it's not complete like the word Islam when you say Islam is peace and I've lectured on it so many times Islam doesn't mean peace. It's not wrong, but it's not complete. We never greet each other saying Islam alaykum, do we? No. Because salam is a part of Islam. So, it's there, not wrong, but not complete. But today we're talking about another word. The word we're talking about now is deen. I want to share with you something so you get the gravity of what I'm talking about. The impact of this word. While I was studying my Bible back in the day when I used to do the preaching, I was curious to know why in the book of Acts of the Apostles there was a word that was capitalized. So I thought maybe it's an accident. There's a capital W on this word. And I said, why? So I looked at other translations of the Bible. They always have capital W. This would imply that it is a proper noun. The name of a group or an organization is a proper noun. Now if I said to you in the Arabic language that these people you would know that I meant these people are people of the book they are Jews or Christians you would know that what if I said to you I think uh, most of you know it's the Arabic language but just in case means the people of something and if I said Aho, Aho, Deen, people of the Deen, and if I say Nahnu, that means we. Nahu, Aho, Kitab. We are the people of the book, right? I was. But now we would say Nahnu, Aho, Deen. We are the people of the Deen. Is that right? Everybody with me? Okay. Because. That's exactly what I found out was in the old manuscripts for the Bible. The people that 
Paul or Saul was killing. He used to, he said, I used to kill them. I used to kill the, these, we call them Christians today, but they weren't called Christians then. Even it says in their Bible, they were never called Christians. Do you know that? Do you know the Bible says they were never called Christians until they went to a place called Antioch. Never called Christians till they went to Antioch. So what were they called when Jesus was still there? He said, Paul said, the people of the way. And they capitalized the W. I want you to compare something in your mind. If the Bible was right, and I said if, if it was right, they were calling them the people of the way. That's Ahuddin. And we are Ahuddin. I read it to you from the Quran, by the way. The only accepted deen with Allah is Al Islam. In the deen, in the Lahil Islam. That's the Quran. Sir Amir Al Imran, chapter 3, verse 19. I also read to you chapter 5, verse 3. Well, a portion of it. And Sir Al Mayadah. When Allah says, Al Yomul Akmatu Lakum Deenakum Wa Atmamtu Alikum. Nitmati will ready to lakum Islama Dina. Now you heard it twice in there. You heard it twice. Did you hear did you hear Dean Dean two times? And Allah says, On this day have I perfected for you your Dean. Conferred upon you my biggest Nama. Nitmati. That's the possessive of Nama. Naim Nitmati. There's a place in Jannah called Jannah to Nahim, yeah? So look what Allah is telling you. The biggest, biggest favor that He can possibly confer upon you, and He has told you what it is. And then He says, and have chosen for you to submit, surrender, obey, in sincerity, and in peace. Al-Islam, that's the word. Now we know what's Islam. That's the meaning of Islam, and to do it as your way, your deen. So Islam, Adina, is the peaceful surrender to God as a way of life. So now we have a better understanding of the word deen. We can say it's our way of life. And everybody has a deen. I want to share with you one more ayah. One more ayah for this part of the khutbah. So many people today are asking us, even from the Muslims, it shocks me when our own kids are asking us questions like this. It should be basic. They should have known it when they were five years old. But I got university students coming up and asking questions. The answer is so simple, it's right in front of you. But I guess when you're growing up in a community of people that are confused, that confusion runs over on all of us. I'm sorry to say. but. Why are we here? What's our purpose in life? And it's not a rhetorical question. They really mean it. They said, well, why are we here? If God is so merciful, huh? why did he create a hellfire? <gasps> wow, you don't even know why you're here, do you? No, why is there any difficulty for human beings if there's a God? Who says this? The Yahudi said this a long time ago. If there's a God, how come we're suffering? What, what, is God mad at us? Why are we suffering? Why is there hardship? Why are there tornadoes and hurricanes and tsunamis? Why are there earthquakes? Volcanoes? Why are big giant mudslides? Rainstorms? People dying in, in Marseille? Why are there wars and rumors of wars? Why is this going on like it is? It's horrible. So where is God in all of this? And we're hearing Muslims asking that kind of question. It means what? It means you must have been absent on the first day because that's what you're supposed to learn from the beginning. Let's go to the ayah and see what it says. Surah al dariya chapter 51, verse 56. Allah answered all my questions. And when I read it the first time in translation, I was still brand new. I'm, you know, oh, wow. You know, first time through the Quran. Huh? And I came to this one ayah. And I screamed. I was in an apartment, right? And I'm sure my neighbors were like, what's the matter with that guy? I screamed out, this is it, this is it, for sure. 
Your purpose of life. Why are you here? What's it all about? Understand from this verse. Of course, if I'd have had the tefs here, it would have been even easier. But Allah guides who He wills. Alhamdulillah, I got it. Translator said that Allah says the meaning of it. And it starts negative. Allah said, I did not. Listen to this. I did not create jinn and human beings illa, except for ibadah. Ibadah to Allah. Ibadah, and we'll give a meaning of that, is a form of self-indentured servitude. That's a big way to say slavery. Self-indentured servitude means I'm giving myself willingly and openly and surrendering completely to my Lord. That's it about it. Here I am, Allah. Ready to go. Tell me, I'll do it. I'm yours. I belong to you. You created me. It's about time I did what I'm here to do. And all you want me to do when I worship, worship Allah. But make it as a what? Now we come to the word deen. As your way of life. Some thought going to a church, a synagogue, or a temple is the worship. Go in, do your thing, right? Pray to your gods, whatever they are. But when you go out in the street, hey, you know, that's in there. I don't have to be nice out here. But when I'm in the masjid, the mosque, right? Then I'm going to be nice guy, humble, sweet, kind, honest. But when I go outside, forget about it. That means there's no deen there. That's not the deen. That's not the deen of Allah. That's what, what we're talking about is fake. That's not deen, it's fake. Because deen is your way, no matter where you are, what you're doing. Of course, in our deen, we worship Allah alone without any partners. We know to follow the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's part of our deen. We know also five times a day, khams, salawat, salawat to khams. Five times a day we stop and we establish, and that's another word, when you say prayer, it's not wrong, but it's not complete. Prayer is this. Help. Give me. That's prayer. I need. I want. That's prayer. Oh, what we got is something much bigger. Has this in it. This is called in Arabic dua. So, yes, dua. But when I do salah, there's dua in it. But there's dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then there's something called simla. What is simla? Connection. Nobody has connection with Allah except the Muslims because we're the only ones who have salah. This is, wallahi, this is a gift. A part of the nama of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the na'im of Allah, is the salawah, the prayers that we do. So if you say prayer, you're not wrong, but it's not complete. If you said Islam is peace, you're not wrong, but it's not complete. If you said deen is religion, you're not wrong, but you're very incomplete. This is why, in summation, I encourage all of us, myself included, of course, to spend as much time as possible learning and understanding the Arabia, the Arabic language, the Fusha, the classical Arabic so that we can get a better grasp. And then when people ask us questions, you'll be able to communicate this in a better way. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who have this understanding, this dedication, the fiqr for this deen of Al-Islam. Amen. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam, rasulullah, wa ala alihi wa sabi ajma'in. Alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen, hu ala dihi jana muslimin. I said this in the first khutbah and again in the second khutbah.
I try to say it in all of the talks that I do. I say Alhamdulillah, praise to Allah, the, the one Jalna made us Muslimin servants to Him in peace. It's not the best translation, but again, it's not wrong, it's not complete. You need to have an encyclopedia sometimes to bring this beautiful, wonderful message of peace, tolerance, love, understanding. And if there's anything on the planet that's holistic, it's got to be Islam because it includes everything. Anything and everything you want to talk about, Islam addresses that. There's nothing left to make up on your own. You want to know what to do? You internalize, go into your own heart and say what I said 25 years ago. Say what one of a Pentecostal bishop who joins us today, here now, said two weeks ago. What his son said last week, God, guide me. If you're sincere when you say that, there's no doubt in my mind, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God Almighty, He will guide anyone who says it with sincerity and they will find themselves on the deen, the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our job, after Allah guides us to this, is to hold on to it. I want to go back to something that we hear the Imams always saying, almost always, in the Jummah Khutbah. But then I want to just read a little bit further into the Qur'an and let us think about it. A'udhu Billahi Min Shaitan Rezeem Ya ayu ladhina amanu itakallah haqa tukatihi wa la tamutun illa wa anta muslimun wa atasimu bihablilahi jami'a wa la tafaraku what a beautiful understanding that comes with this, this simple little addition on there. The first part you're probably very familiar with. Yayu Ladina Amanu. Oh, those who have come to the right Iman or faith in Islam. Have taqwa for Allah. Taqwa, we said in other programs, is a shield against Allah's ghadab, His anger, His wrath on the Day of Judgment. And don't die. It's His right, by the way. It's his right that you will have this taqwa. Some people call it God consciousness, fear of Allah. Some call it righteousness and piety. And again, it's not wrong, but it's not complete. To have this shield, this taqwa for Allah. It's Allah's right. And then he says, don't die. Wa la illa want to Muslim moon, except in you're in a state of surrender, submission, obedience, sincerity, and peace with your Creator. And all of those words are necessary, by the way. And there's more. There's more. But these are the principal ones. To get a better understanding what Allah is saying. SubhanAllah. I get so excited when I think it's in front of us. Just take some time. Go to the scholars. Ask them. I rely heavily on English, even though studying Arabic, I keep coming back, how am I going to say it in English? Why? I'm not, I'm not learning Arabic language so that I can get a wife who speaks Arabic. That's not my game. And I'm not learning the Arabic language so I can go into a restaurant and order everything on the menu in Arabic. I want to know what it means so I can tell the people here in my country what real Islam is about. I'm tired of picking up a newspaper, reading a magazine, listening to the radio or seeing on television the opposite, the very opposite of Islam being presented as radical Muslims, extremist Islamic, It's time, brothers and sisters in Islam, that you and I get this right understanding. We don't need to go to the street with a bunch of banners and shouting and uh, little cute things that you're going to say. Go to Facebook and put stuff out there. And, uh, uh, uh. 
We don't have the basic ourselves. Somebody asks you, I'm talking about in the English language. Some of you know much more than me, I know that. But in English, when somebody asks you about Dean, about Taqwa, about Islam, even Allah, Allah doesn't mean God. Allah means God. Allah is His name. Arabs that I talked to in other countries said, Really? I didn't think of that. What did you think, guys? This is something big. In the last couple minutes, I want to tell you about something. We're going to continue this tonight, by the way. We have a live broadcast. We're going to be broadcasting live from this center. First time ever Guidus TV broadcast live or broadcast or even recorded anything here at your center. And I want to encourage you to come and bring with you some who don't know Islam. And they don't have to be a so-called Christian or non-Muslim. They can be Muslims who don't know Islam, but bring people with you when you come tonight. You think you got some people here. I want you to bring so that we don't have room in this entire facility for everybody. We need to do that. Brothers, you were created and you were put on this earth for a reason. And I read it to you already. Brothers, it is our understanding. I'm talking with some of the brothers here, knowledgeable brothers here in your community. It's our understanding that something that you've got right in front of you, do not take this for granted. Do not take Islam for granted. Don't take Allah for granted. Do not take this establishment for granted. I would like to encourage you to help me tonight blast the world because we are broadcasting on Guidance TV around the entire world on the internet and a new thing called apps. Over 50% of all the people watching Guidance TV today around the world are watching us on their handheld devices. We have also antennas right now broadcasting in Los Angeles, New York, Houston, Dallas, and Fort Worth, and Columbus, Ohio. And until yesterday, until yesterday, I had no idea what I'm going to tell you right now. I had a chance to get an antenna for Gaddis TV in Nashville, Tennessee. And I laughed and said, who would need that? There's no Muslims there. Oops. Oops. And when I came in and saw this, I said, oh my goodness. You have a gift from Allah in front of you. If you do not use this, there's a big punishment waiting. But if we will do this and put this place to work, I see with my eyes, inshallah ta'ala, the solution for Muslims around the world coming from right here. True or false, true or false, the king of the jungle is called the lion. A lathe. The lion, yeah? True or false? If that's true, why? Elephants are bigger, hippopotamuses weigh more, giraffes have a longer neck. The cheetah can outrun the lion, so why is he the king of the jungle? Because of his voice. His voice scares everything from ants to elephants. His voice puts terror, yes, terror. You wanna know who's the terrorist in the jungle? The lion, because of his voice. When you have no voice, today's world, you're nobody. Here, now, in this establishment where we are right this minute, you've got the chance. You've got the place. This is the place. You're not even using half of this building yet. Do you know that? 40% of the building, it's beautiful. What about the other 60%? Whatever you did in the past, may Allah reward you. But it's not enough. How many of you think you did enough salat now you don't have to pray the rest of your life? Huh? Dumb! 
So whatever you did before, may Allah accept it. I'm asking Allah, accept every single thing you did. And I'm telling you, now it's time to get serious. Get really serious. Let's put our hands together. Now, here's my commitment to this community and to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I am ready to do whatever Allah will let me do and let us do, my team, to come and be a part of your community with Guidance TV and do whatever it takes to make the people of the world stand up and take notice of a real lion when we roar out and say, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad or Rasulullah. But I want them to know what we meant so that they don't become so scared and start immediately trying to make some kind of campaign against us. And when we say Allahu Akbar, I want to hear from them, I mean. I don't need to hear from them, oh, these terrorists are, this is all wrong. And it's our fault, brothers and sisters. Don't tell me, oh, we're so few. Don't say that to me. I don't buy it. Imam asked me to go exit for five minutes. I wanted to end at 1.30, but I'm going to do what he asked me to do. And I'm going to use this time for something that the Prophet ﷺ told us about. I usually do this in the lectures, but not in the Jum'ah, but I'm going to do it now, inshallah. Talking about predictions, prophecies of our Prophet ﷺ. And I'm going to ask you to think and reflect with me while I'm speaking. Our Prophet ﷺ was not a god, he was not a son of a god, but he was the best of human beings to carry the message that there's nobody to worship, there's nothing to worship, there's nothing in the universe to worship except the Creator and the Sustainer. And he is the one, Muhammad ﷺ, who we say peace and blessing be upon him, who told us about our condition that would come eventually. And I ask you only to reflect with me now, are we in that condition? Let's talk about the Hadith of Jibril salam, the end of the Hadith of Jibril, and that's when Prophet Muhammad salam, was asked by the angel Gabriel, when is the hour? He said, I don't know and you don't know. I don't know and you don't know. But the signs are, and he gave two of the signs, when the slave gives birth to their own master, and when you see the poor Arabs, you can't really translate this one into English perfectly, but when you see the poor desert Arabs competing to build the tallest buildings in the world. Burj Khalifa today is the tallest building in the world. It's in UAE and Dubai. Tallest clock in the world is in Mecca. Tall buildings. Where exactly and who built them? These people were absolutely destitute. These were the most impoverished human beings on the planet until oil come about 60, 70 years ago. Yes or no? Yes. Allah gave them that. And what are they doing with it? Tall buildings? It's their choice. It's their money. But well, they're doing it. Ah. And mothers today giving birth to their own Masters, how many times you've been in the store, Target, Walmart, somewhere, and you see the child telling the mother what to do? Or worse, telling them to shut up. Even if we have servants who work for us, we would never tell them to shut up. That's too disgraceful. That is too disrespectful. And I see kids telling their mother, shut up. And, oh, I'm sorry. I, yeah. Go sit in the car, okay? They think it's funny. They have TV shows. I don't even tell you all the shows that they have insulting the, the humanity across the board, putting down the family concept and destroying religion constantly, constantly. And again, we won't go into that right now. We'll talk about it tonight, but the other hadith of the Rasul Sassalam, and this is what we're gonna end with. He told his companions there will come a day when your enemies will be inviting. They will be inviting each other to you to destroy you. Like you call people to come to a feast. 
when you have food, you're like, come on, come on, eat with us, please, come on. Would you join us? We have food. Come. And this has always been the Arabic way and the, now the Muslim way to call people to share, right? And today, look at your, I mean, seriously, you don't have to go far. Look at the television, look at the newspaper. Every single day, right now, front headlines calling each other to come and let's go destroy Islam and the Muslims. Yes or no? If I'm wrong, tell me, set me right now. I heard it on the TV last night. I'm not stupid. You're not stupid. The problem is the people listening aren't stupid, but they don't have an alternative because we didn't give them a voice. Where's the voice from Islam? Where is the guidance from Islam? Where? Tonight we're going to talk about it. You bring the people. Now the end of the Hadith, they ask Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is it because we'll be so few in number? Is it because we're going to be so few in number? La, no. He said, you'll be everywhere on the earth. Are Muslims everywhere on the earth? You'll be everywhere on the earth, even in Nashville, Tennessee. You'll be everywhere on the earth. And we are. But then he said, like the foam scum on a flood. Are we like that? Worthless. Are we like that? I'm asking you to reflect with me. Think, is that our case? Are we a lion with no voice? Are we the silent one watching all of the mayhem taking place every day where we don't say anything about it? We have no voice. Is that our case? And so they asked. They ask Rasul Sassam, what will be our condition? How could we be so many? How? How could we be so many? And these people would be calling to us. Islam is number one in number in the world today for religion. Did you know that? It is. Oh yeah. Human beings alone comprise more in true Islam than any other faith group. Because Catholics and uh, Protestants consider each other to be far, you know. But for sure, we're talking about all over the planet. And what's our condition? And I ask you to think, is it right what our Prophet Sassam said? What will be our condition? Habadunya! The love of the material world and the fear of death. Is that our case? Yes or no? And Allah said, Lekum dinakum wali adin. Everybody has a way. Even atheists have a way. They don't have a religion, but they have a deen. And they are in love with this dunya. This is their paradise. This is the only paradise they know. They think they're going to die and evaporate. This is their deen. There's your real, true, inspired by the devil, Shaitan. Those pure, poor people who have given up on everything. And again, because they don't have the message. Is it our job to get the message out? If it is, then don't leave this building until you have put your hands with our hands. Support this effort here in this building. Support Guide Us TV. There'll be boxes when you go out the door where you can do the, just exactly that. I want you to take whatever you have and put it in the box for this masjid. Support Guide Us TV as you can. But listen to me. That's not the end. That's the beginning. That's the beginning. Show Allah you're not in love with this dunya. Show Allah you are not in love with what He created. You're in love with the Creator. And pick up the bumper sticker that says that on it. Worship the Creator, not the creation. And then it just says, Guide us TV.
put that bumper sticker on your vehicle and get that message out. Zafmullah khair. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from all of us to forgive me if I made any mistakes. Whatever I said or did was good. It's from Allah. Mistakes are from myself. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Rabbana ayatina fi dunya hasan wa fila kirti hasan wa kina dhabinan. Rabbana la tuzig kulubana ba'da yidha daytana wahab lana dhala duk rahman nakhan tu wahab. اللهم إني ظلمت نفسي ظلم كثير ولا يكفر ذنوب إلا أنت فكر لي مكفر تمن أن أنت كرهم لي أن أخذ فرهم اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم من أخذ من الماتين الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين هو الذي جعلنا